Hello, RT viewers, and welcome to a new edition of Africa Today. In today's edition, we are going to tackle the situation in uh, South Sudan. But first, we'll take uh, the report about the UNHCR, which is warning that the tens of thousands of South Sudanese people are fleeing into Sudan from the famine-hit nation. The details with the following report by Samah Sharif. The United Nations Refugee Agency said on Monday more than 31,000 South Sudanese refugees, mostly women and children, have crossed the border into Sudan this year, fleeing famine and conflict. The UN declared famine last week in parts of South Sudan's unity state, with about 5.5 million people expected to have no reliable source of food by July. A statement from the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, in Khartoum said initial expectations were that 60,000 refugees may arrive through 2017, but in the first two months alone, over 31,000 refugees arrived. More than a million people have fled South Sudan since a civil war erupted in 2013 after President Salva Kiir's fired Vice President Rik Machar. Fighting between government forces and Bashar-led rebels has caused the largest mass exodus of any conflict in Central Africa since the 1994 Rwandan genocide. The fighting has approached more than 3 million people and the UN says continuing displacement presented heightened risks of prolonged food unproduction into 2018. South Sudan is rich in oil resources, but six years after secession from neighboring Sudan, there are only 200 kilometers of paved roads in a nation with an area of 619,745 square kilometers. And uh, Morocco on Sunday announced the withdrawal of its forces from a UN buffer zone in the disputed Western Sahara territory where the months where for months uh, they had been in a standoff uh, with the troops from the Polisario independence movement. The details follow. Morocco said on Sunday it will pull back from a zone of the contested Western Sahara that has raised tensions with Algerian backed Polisario front separatists. The foreign ministry said in a statement the Kingdom of Morocco will proceed with a unilateral withdrawal from the zone. It said the decision was taken by King Mohammed VI at the request of U.S. Secretary General Antonio Guterres. It also said Rabat now hopes the Secretary General's intervention will allow a return to the previous situation in the zone concerned, keep its status intact, allow the flow of normal road traffic and thus safeguard the ceasefire. In a telephone call to Guterres on Friday, the king called on the United Nations to take urgent measures to end provocation by the Polisario Front threatening a 1991 ceasefire. Morocco insists that the former Spanish colony is an integral part of its kingdom, but the Polisario is demanding a referendum on self-determination. The two sides fought for control of the Western Sahara from 1974 to 1991, with Rabat gaining control of the territory before the UN brokered ceasefire took effect. Austria's uh, foreign minister called on Monday for setting up mass holding camps in northern Africa for migrants, a plan dismissed by his German counterpart as unrealistic. The German minister on his first trip to Austria as foreign minister was blunt on rejecting his counterpart's vision of creating mass migrant centers in countries like Libya or Sudan. The Austrian minister has cited the success of the EU-Turkey deal in reducing the influx of migrants from outside Europe, but the German minister suggested the comparison was flawed, arguing that the chaos and the anarchy gripping Libya doomed such an agreement. Gambian President Adama Barrow has replaced the head of the military, a pillar of his predecessor, Yahya Jama, repressive government, and dismissed a number of senior military officers. The move came as Gambians seek justice for uh, relatives who disappeared during Jama rule. 
And moving on to South Africa, where South Africa's sports minister said on Tuesday that Durban may lose out on hosting the 2022 Commonwealth Games due to the challenges. In December, South Africa officials said it remained fully committed to hosting the Games despite falling short of the requirements. Durban was the only city with confirmed bid after uh, Edmonton in Canada withdrew in last uh, February. And Gambians are seeking justice for relatives who disappeared during the rule of former President Yahya Jama, who fled into exile in Equatorial Guinea. Some families hope to gather evidence for a case against Jama, who quit under international pressure after losing an election in December for human rights abuses, including unlawful detention, torture, and murder of perceived opponents, charges his supporters deny. Rights officials say building a case could be tough. While Jama fled before fulfilling a pledge to withdraw Gambia from the ICC, Equatorial Guinea has never been a member of the Hague-based court and would be unlikely to hand him over. Still, police in Gambia have promised to investigate cases of at least 30 people so far reported as missing or killed since Jama seized power in 1994, among them journalists, businessmen and soldiers. Several senior officials have been arrested, including the former prison boss, interior minister and spy chief, who was charged with murder last week. Nine other suspects of being members of Jama's death squads, known as the junglers, were also arrested.